Coach, the city of Seattle, known for coffee, grunge music, and of course, rain. And we're definitely going to get a heavy dose of the last of those three here tonight as you look inside a wet and wild century link field. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Chicago Bears. Now Trubisky. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback on the expected passing situation. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. Trey Flowers picks it. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. After the interception, here's Wilson. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Tyler Lockett was the target there. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. At the 31-yard line. What? Who's the team? Mike Popo. Ready? Slam! Slam! On second down, Lynch. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. From the gun, it's Wilson. They'll get this out to Lynch, complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 17-yard line. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. And yeah, we talk about complementary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them, to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got the turnover? We appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and it'll be second and 12. Tried to go draw play out of the gun down here. Yeah, they tried to spread things out, didn't they? They wanted to move people away from the center of the field, away from the line of scrimmage near the ball, so that the runner could find some space. Unsuccessfully, though. On second down now, it's Lynch. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Now Wilson dancing to his left. He may try and run for this. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Now a play fake here on first down. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. 
He'd had some success as a runner previously on this drive, just not as much space there that time. Yeah, this time when he pulled it down, they were ready for him, so I think he's going to have to fling a few in order to open up that running lane again. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Wilson to the end zone, but it's incomplete. The line of scrimmage is the three as they look to cash in on third and goal. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. So they opted to pass for it on third and goal. Let's see what they do on fourth and goal. Well, I think they threw it with the idea that if they didn't get it, they would go for it on fourth and goal. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. Jason Meyer is on for the field goal. A 20-yard attempt. <laughs> and they're going to fake it. He wants to throw it here. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. And he returns it up just shy of the 20 to the 19-yard line. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Chicago defense able to come up with a goal line stand. On the ground, it's Montgomery. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. To throw on second and six, Trubisky. And his throw here is incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And that is incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover. But doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah. And they had all that momentum after getting the football. And now zapped right back in the other direction. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. Returnable for Lockett. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Seahawks back out of the field here getting set for their next drive. You know, this is a team that great record this year. Double digits and wins again. But they have played a lot of close games in 2019, haven't they? They think it's character building. And they think it's going to serve them well come the cauldron of the playoffs. That when you play those intense games, those close games, they've been there before. Look at them. They beat the Steelers by two. They beat the Bengals by one on opening day. How about the game against the Browns? Just by four or against them on the road. A field goal better than the Niners in overtime. So they've been there. They understand it. There's an author named Angela Duckworth who wrote a book called Grit a few years ago. Pete Carroll, the head coach, really bought into that and that idea of having a gritty, tough team. And we've seen evidence of it in 2019. That's a great point, though. Come playoff time, if it's a one-score game down the stretch, they're not going to be daunted. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, and it's third down. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them... They remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. It'll be a 41-yard punt, giving five on the return. And the Bears take over. 
As the Bears come back out here, we talked about their quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, earlier, and their head coach, Matt Nagy, but bottom line, it's not going to be a second consecutive postseason appearance for this team. They just took a little bit too long to get rolling. They were a better team in the second half, but by then, both the Packers and the Vikings were well clear of them. That is so true, and look, all the issues they had on offense, Mitchell Trubisky struggling with injuries and inconsistency early. Then on the defensive side, I think it was underrated, the loss of Danny Trevathan at inside linebacker. He went out fairly early. Akeem Hicks gets hurt in London against Oakland with an elbow injury. He doesn't make it back until week 15 against Green Bay. Without Akeem Hicks in the middle, that really hurt Khalil Mack and Leonard Floyd coming off the edge because teams can now devote extra attention out to those guys since they didn't have to worry about the pass rush as much up the middle. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted but it winds up falling incomplete. He's not exactly had a banner start to this game. We're still in the first quarter. He's already thrown an interception, and that should have been the second one. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And he will be hit from behind and run over. Wow. Quentin Jefferson coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Well, they went with a nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Now it's Lockett. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big-time play and break through the barrier. They'll run the Marshawn Lynch. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Well, that didn't appear to be a run, but he just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. There's Wilson to throw. They'll set up the screen to Lynch. Ten yards and a Seattle first down. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. First down, the run with Lynch. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now Lynch. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. They went backwards five yards there on third down to break up fourth. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, is block the guy at the point of attack and then climb to the next level and get the linebacker. When you're not allowed to climb, you got a free hitter, and that's what we saw there. And a really nice play resulted for them. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 24. 
A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Give credit to K.J. Wright. He was disrupting defensively. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from it. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. A quick throw out wide, caught by Robinson. Trubisky hitting Robinson for a big one, 45 yards. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player, but he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now Trubisky to throw. That's complete to the Memphis man, Anthony Miller. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll run on second down with Cohen. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. They'll try to run for it with Cohen, and he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have had a few men in the box there. Robinson's got it. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago from 19 yards away as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. They go with Lynch right side. A gain there of 21 yards. Even from up here in the booth, the play-by-play -play guy could tell that there was some pretty good blocking on the right side of the line. Well, you have good eyes, 
and it's almost like a ballet when it's executed that well. Everyone in the right spot, everyone in sync, everyone hitting the perfect notes. A little more percussion and a lot more yeah. bass, I would think, than you get your normal ballet. But at the same time, that was well executed. Well, they're going to get about three here out of this first down run, and that'll bring up second and seven. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and seven, Wilson, his throw incomplete. The tight end, Luke Wilson, was the target, and it'll bring up third down. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. And the Seahawks on third check, down, check, check. two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Now it's Wilson. They set up the screen to Lynch. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Wilson going to fake the give and keep it himself. It's caught. Lock it. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. This is Homer. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Seven yards there and a first down. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to the ground, this time Lynch. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. On second down and four. Wilson, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. That's sacked by Khalil Mack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Wilson and the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. He's going to get this out to Marshawn Lynch. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be fourth down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Meyer's kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. 
And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Back to the ground. This time Montgomery. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is, and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance, they're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. He finds Robinson. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. Press coverage on the outside, and for defenders, that's the ultimate risk-reward. If you take the risk, can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on them. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. Now it's Trubisky. That is incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. Play action. It's Trubisky. There goes a deep ball in zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Brad McDougal. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And incomplete. Well, this is a good window right here, partner, to wish happy holidays to everybody out there in Madland, and happy holidays to you and yours and the as well. Same to you. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, however you celebrate the holiday season. Yeah, by the way, speaking of, what is your favorite holiday song? Because I know in the elevator on the way up, we heard Felice Navidad, and you went into the fetal position. Yeah. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Eddie Goldman with a sack. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here from the shotgun. Wilson. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make a play on the football. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. They run, Lynch. And he's dropped right at the 40, gain of three. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. To throw is Wilson. They're able to locate Wilson. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. 
One Wilson to another for a Seahawk first down. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. Now Wilson on first down. He'll find Metcalf. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. DK Metcalf, 37 yards. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. That's one of those long drives where not only do you score, but you really tire out the defense, too. That's a great point, because now they've been on the field for a long time. Them going to the bench, trying to make adjustments, trying to figure things out, but they'll do so fatigued. The point after threw the raindrops up and good, and the lead is now 10-7. to seven. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is, because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks, and while they'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. The linebacker, Bobby Wagner, able to get back in coverage and knock it free. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So they look like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. A 40-yard punt, no return, and that will come the offense as they take over. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They're starting to put some space here. The first quarter, they didn't look so hot offensively. This second quarter, though, they've looked really good. They've jumped in the saddle in a big way now, and now they're in full gallop. I mean, before, kind of cantering around a little bit, right, trying to feel their way, not getting done what they wanted to. But somehow they put it together with play calling, execution, and now there's a pretty big gap. And they'll look to make that gap even bigger here. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. He finds Lynch. It's complete. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Here's Wilson going for Metcalf on the deep ball. 
That's caught at the 25. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Russell Wilson with two first-half touchdown passes. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. Myers connects on the PAT, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They find themselves down 17-7 as they start this drive first and 10. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Here's Trubisky to throw. Hits his target. It's Taylor Gabriel. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time, and that'll bring up second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time, and it's third down. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the... And now Miller hit, and he fumbles. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And the return out shy of midfield to the 46-yard line. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. And an alley to run. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave them with second and a yard. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Now the Seahawks gonna use the first of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Hey, 
Now Lynch, he's got it on the draw. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. This is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. So on is Jason Myers. He's hit from as long as 58 in his career. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And with great field position here, chance for some points before the break. That's prime real estate. Just have to decide how they want to try and take their shot to try and put those points on the board. Possibly a good spot here to take a shot as they come out with three receivers to the left on second and less than a yard. Now it's Trubisky. Going to let one fly for Robinson. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Now Wilson, this one into the hands of Metcalf. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Uh, he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double and triple him. Do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. They'll run on first down. Lynch. And that one blown up quickly. 
as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll make this a second and 13. From the gun, it's Wilson. That's caught by Hollister. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. He finds Ursula. Touchdown, Seattle. Make it a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now. Yeah, the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Going up top for Miller, and that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. An attempt at a deep ball there, they didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Now Trubisky to the sideline and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. Well, they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Trubisky to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Trying to get that one to his tight end. And they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone and throw into the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Mike, Crunch time, defense. Now Wilson down around his goal line. They'll roll him out right. And he's only able to get it to right around the three. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Bang, bang. 
On second down, it's Lynch. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. From the gun on third down, Wilson. And he's got his target. That's more. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Picked off by Khalil Mack. And they will score a pick six for a Bears touchdown. Short throw pick six right there. Those linebackers, they love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead down to 10, So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 24. Back to the air, Wilson after the pick six. Out to his left, and he's gonna keep it here. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. On second down now, it's Lynch, and he is going to lose yardage here. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss, and now it's third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. On third down, Wilson. And that is incomplete. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And 
They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Escaping the pressure right. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. On second down, Montgomery. And he'll be taken down well behind the line, and I think he might have just given those four yards right back. They lost four there, and it's third down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Rolling to his right. He can run for it, and he will. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 33. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. Montgomery works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. From the 29, Trubisky. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it sometimes you have just too much time on your hands right you end up thinking way too much and your hands get shaky and yes he's a tight end but that's a catch he should have made now they got to get to the 23 here on third from the gun it's trubisky that's complete to robinson and inside the 20 before he's brought down and we that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 18. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. well. That tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. On second and goal, Trubisky. This stadium once registered as the loudest roar ever recorded, and you can hear them now, third and goal. A 
Again, it's Trubisky. He may try and... And the Chicago Bears are in the end zone. They don't want it, but they don't They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes? Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Call it a gain of three. And that'll make it second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Cut. So that'll back him up five. Following the penalty, Lynch, and he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, you've told me before, it's great to be an athlete. A lot of great athletes out there. It's good to have instincts, and he has those. I would take those above athleticism in a lot of cases because if you know where the ball's going, before anyone else can get there and block you, you can make up for lack of athleticism by being in the right spot at the right time. And took him down in the backfield with those instincts. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. They want to be methodical, or they want to take the big strike and go after it right now. On first and ten, it's Trubisky. Now Trubisky lost the football. Plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. 
And nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Call it no gain there, and they've got a ways to go now on third down. The Bears on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and a mile. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine on the carry, but it's not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Well, they got off the field on third down. An excellent job, an excellent defensive series. We always talk about adjustments, and usually only at halftime. But the best teams adjust series to series. And on that series, they adjusted so well that they got the job done in fine style. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Wilson. It's caught, lock it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. Check, check three. Now Wilson on first down. He's going to get this out to Marshawn Lynch. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't My drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. Again, they'll pound it with Lynch. And finding room to work, he's down to the two-yard line. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. And Myers able to knock it through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down.
Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. I think this is where we see how the game has moved along a little bit. Free safety, no blitz, but reads the play, has no responsibility in coverage, and takes a gamble and goes and gets the quarterback. Well, is that a spot, though, where when he's coming, the quarterback needs to be able to find somebody or not necessarily? Has to, because with that amount of time coming from the free safety position, someone should break open. It'll be a gain of about five, but they're left with a third and still about 12 to go. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. It's taken to the 26. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I think we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Throwing again on second down. Wilson going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times. Tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. On third down, they go Lynch. Lynch pushing, but he is not going to get there. They stop him short. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. Open man, Taylor Gabriel. 
down the numbers. There he goes. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Taylor Gabriel, an 80-yard touchdown. And now they can recapture the lead if they can make the PAT. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they design every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. It's a short kick, taken near the 18. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But You've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't right turn else. it over, right? You're giving it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away, and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bonds to be gained from it. The improv on the scramble there gets them six, and that'll be second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson, and he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. They should have put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Six man. Check curl, check curl, check curl. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Khalil Mack showing his strength and quickness there, a loss of four. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier, and now he comes up with the sack here. No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Wilson, he finds Lynch, it's complete. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be third and ten. That's a game of four. Brings up third and ten. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. From the shotgun, Wilson. That's complete. He's got Lynch out of the backfield. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and that'll bring up fourth down. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And this kick is not going to get there. It's short and no good. So a chance there goes by the wayside. That one just didn't have enough leg to get there. Yeah, and it would have given them a lead here in the fourth quarter. And those are the ones that keep you up at night when you don't have enough distance. I wonder if maybe did, it, did his foot hit the ground first? Did he not get enough of the ball? He's going to be thinking about that one. First down, a run with Cohen. The tackle made by K.J. Wright. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. 
So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, y'all. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home. On second down, it's Montgomery. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. is a big third down and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here on third down a run with Cohen and he is going to have the first down and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd whistles now in a timeout so defensively they burn it here with 151 left Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the lot of scrimmage, and that's it. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. They're not ready for this, man. They're not ready for this. Let's give them a shot. Y'all playing the wrong football. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And he's all the way down to the six-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation... Should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Watch the ship. Watch the ship. Hey, watch the ship. Watch the ship. They'll run with Montgomery. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And they were booing Charles by a big second half to put this one on ice. And I know a lot of people watching this one were thinking to themselves, I'll bet halftime was really interesting. Probably took the paint off the walls with some of the words that were said. <laughs> but I get the sense that it was much more of the adjustments they made. They came in with a game plan that we saw that didn't work in the first half. They made the adjustments necessary, went away from that, and then they got it together got a spark, and then took off. It's really nice to watch in the second half. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter, at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from 